Welcome to another episode of Jay Leno's Garage. You know, a while back we shot a special at Pebble Beach. You probably saw it on this website. Uh, it was just about an hour long. We did it for uh, CNBC, the television network. But a lot of times when you shoot TV shows, you shoot way more than you can use. Well, there was a bunch of good stuff that didn't make it into the special. I thought maybe our YouTube viewers would like to see. Uh, you're going to see a couple of cars from the preservation class, which didn't make it. You'll see one of my favorite cars on the lawn at the Quail, and you'll see a hot rod. Well, here, check it out. Here's another nice original car that has a great shot in the preservation class. Hi, your name is? Steve Hamilton. Steve Hamilton. And this is a Hotchkiss. Tell us a little about the history of this car. This car is a 1911 Hotchkiss. During World War I, they harvested brass and copper off of cars. As a result, this car never ran. It's a brand new car. Wow. And when I got the car out of a barn in France, we had an original radiator that we'd found. We fixed up the uh, intake manifolds and things that were missing and acid etched them to look old. But for the most part, it was all here. Let's show people the interior. Look how luxurious this thing is. And it has what they call railroad windows where you, uh, the roll up window had not been invented yet, right? You just, you pull this up and then drop the window down just like you would in a rail car. Oh, look at the rear. Look at how luxurious this thing is. We just cleaned up the wood. We yeah. never touched anything, really. And what is the engine? Is it uh, a T-head? Is it a... It's a T-head. Oh, okay. The engine was a Hotchkiss and uh, had acetylene lights. It didn't have an electrical system. Right. They had a magneto, so you have to yeah. crank it. Well, this is my favorite class of car, the preservation <laughs> class. It really yeah. is. Because this one needed a little work to kind of preserve it. Yeah. Yeah, so it's not like it's been run all these years. And it hadn't run in, what, almost 100 years, right? That's right. What do you think your chances are? Well, it's not the most elegant car in the world, but it has so many interesting features. Oh, be interesting. I think it's really elegant. I think so. you got a good shot. Good luck. Well, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Wow. Quietest car here. Hi, Jay. Wow. How are we doing? <laughs> Looks like you were breaking for all you had to stop. <laughs> it was. You know, with breakneck speeds of like five or six miles an hour. Yeah. This is a Turner Meese, is that correct? That's correct. Right. Okay. right. Now, is this uh, in the preservation class? It's in the steam class. On oh, the steam class. Okay, very nice. Hi, I'm Jay. Yeah, Jack Crow, hi. Hi, Jack, and you're the owner? I am. And Arnold is a master restorer. I've known Arnold for years. And of course, this is a very sophisticated steam car, much more than a Stanley, isn't it? Yeah, it's a water tube type with flash boiler. Right, like a white. Like a white, yeah, three cylinder, single acting steam, chain drive. The boiler is a square type up underneath. It runs about four to 600 pounds of steam. Wow, that's a lot for 1904. Is that original paint, do you think? Yeah. Or, oh, it is. So you could be in the preservation class as well. Yes. Well, of course, 110 years, who knows what's <laughs> yeah, original. Yeah. Now, you're not supposed to say <laughs> that. You're supposed, supposed to go, you're supposed to go well, yeah, that's yeah. That's story if we're sticking to it. <laughs> and kids will ask if you're the original owner. That's yeah. the part that really hurts. Well, it looks like you're running low on steam there. Uh, there we'll just uh, hand pump up some more. You pump purpose. up some water. Look at that. And then you go. And then when you're moving, it pumps in on yeah. its own, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Just sitting here with no, okay. no water. Well, I let you go. I know you've got to make Frisco by nightfall. <laughs> Good luck, gentlemen. Thanks. All righty. Thanks, Jay. This is Monique Gardner. This yeah. is a Lotus Cortina. has the Lotus engine in it. This is, of course, a 66 or 65? She's a 66. This is a classic example of a car that just 15, 20 years ago was worth nothing. $400, $800, and they've come back to be pretty expensive cars. Would well, you I say? think let's say a little over 100000 Okay, 100000 yeah. okay. 100000 yes. This is a car that kind of started the whole fast, small, compact car, Indeed certainly in England. Did. And when I was a kid, this was one of the most sought after cars. It's been just maintained or beautifully restored. Let's She's been restored. beautifully maintained. The man who had her in New Hampshire, of yeah. all places, he bought it in 1966. He put 2,300 miles on it. He says, no, I'm not touching it. We lost him a few years ago, and the state planner oh. says, hey, you want to buy something British and American? Right. I said, yes. Oh, very good. Well, yes. you couldn't have done better. It's a four-speed car. Just a classic example of what we're talking about. It's something that uh, just keeps going up in value, and it's a lot of fun. Yeah. Thanks a lot. You have to mention, too, that Jim Clark made it very famous taking around corners on two wheels. He did, he did. I have not done that. She will do it. <laughs>
You have classic American iron like this hot rod. This is Roger Hoffman, and this is his car, and it's got a fantastic story. Tell, uh, briefly, tell us the story. This car is a 1932 Channel Bonneville Roadster. A guy named Jack Kakura bought the car as a 32 in 1940, ran it in Bonneville every year from 1946 to 1960. He was a founding member of the Gear Grinders Car Club. The only three people who ever worked on the car were all Gear Grinders guys. And he had the car 65 years. He had years. the car till the day he died, wow. 2005. So with one guy, one American hot rodder, 65 years of his life. Let's look at the dashboard. Take a look there. It looks still like it has a, uh, obviously it's a Chrysler Hemi. Was that a 392? Yeah, bored out to 454. Okay. So 454 Hemi with a 671 magnesium fronted blower. And it's, it's got the aircraft Earhart disc brakes from 1946. Wow, look at Some that. Of the first one. Well, it's just fantastic. This is what's fun about the quail. It's just all kinds of interesting stuff gets invited. Roger, thank you for bringing this piece of history yeah, and showing it to we us. We could start it for you if you want. Sure, start it up. Let's hear it. You know, you all see the winners at Pebble Beach. You see them get their trophies. They're all real happy. But what about the losers? How do some of them take it? <laughs> well, I, uh, <laughs> I sat down with some of the judges to get a look at the other side of Pebble Beach. Take a look. Welcome to a segment we call Pissed Off Millionaires. I'm sitting with the, some of the judges of Pebble Beach, otherwise known as the Council of Elder. And their job is to go car to car and award points or detract points, uh, depending on what it may be. Now, when you're dealing with millionaires, and in many cases billionaires, who have spent hundreds of thousands, even millions of dollars restoring these cars, they're not always happy when they lose. Uh, you guys must have heard some amazing tales. Keel, has yeah. anyone ever tried to bribe you? Well, um, well I guess. I mean, I did receive a couple of gifts in my room. Really? Uh, yes, I did, absolutely, in advance. And, you know, I'm, I'm in the insurance business around these cars, too, which... What kind of gifts? I, 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 there was a jacket that sort of appeared in my room, and uh, then I was judging the car. By Kuna? Honestly. It was <laughs> very nice. It was very nice. It was a very supple jacket. Very supple. Right. Yes. And what happened? Um, but the car did not win uh, the class. We did, and I never acknowledged anything about the whole. Nobody thing. asked for the jacket. Nobody back. asked for the jacket. <laughs> Nobody asked for the jacket back. Uh, but th he did cancel his insurance. Oh, he canceled his insurance. <laughs> yeah. Well, so it's he true. gave you a gift before. <laughs> yes. And then after you didn't. Uh, wow. All right. Very expensive jacket. It was an expensive jacket. Okay. What we're talking about is ego. Yeah. Guys that come here to have. Nothing but great egos. They've invested not only their money, but a lot of emotions in this car. And they can run away on you. Now, Jules, you've been at every concourse since 1950, which is an amazing record. That's correct. You must have had some people who were less than thrilled when they didn't win. One fellow showed up. I don't recall his name. He had a beautiful black convertible coupe or cabriolet. But he came here to win, and he didn't. He was a guest at the lodge, right. but he was so mad. He went back to the lodge and he urinated on all the walls before he left <laughs> the really? property. Really, I swear to you. Wow, I didn't think car owners marked the territory. That's <laughs> wow. Well, this guy did a good job of it. And of course, he, his name was, I guess, blacklisted at Pebble. Yeah, I would think so. <laughs> yeah. Did people demand to see your scorecards? Have you had that happen? Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 You ever had anybody stand with their hand over the over the defect in the car? You know, oh, yeah. just, you know, they like, stand if they're trying to block your view. Yeah. Or, oh, yeah. Have you had that? Oh yeah, absolutely. You do see determination. You know, one of the rules is that if you, in order to get your award, you have to start the car and drive it over the ramp. I mean, that's an absolute thing. And one year, a collector had a flat tire. And we all looked sympathetically at the flat tire. But wouldn't you know, when his turn came, he drove it over the ramp with the tire whapping and slapping. And I mean, he was going to get that award no matter what. I remember one time there was a guy who, uh, it was in Auburn. And the judges came around, and the judges said, oh, your clock is not working. He said, well, let me get the restore. And he said, the restore is not around. And the judges are waiting. And the judges said, well, look, we'll come back. We'll do the other cars, we'll come back. If your clock's running by then, we won't deduct anything. He goes, I'll get my restore. And he can't find the restore. So the judges come back. 
store is not there. They deduct the points. The guy is fuming, screaming. And you see this, they've got a sandwich and a Coke. And, he's, you know, and he starts screaming, the clock doesn't work. You, you, the clock, you should have known. And the store said, did you wind it? He went, what? <laughs> wind, it. Wind, wind it. Wind it. He didn't know. Who winds it? He thought it was an electric clock. That's quartz. <laughs> right. So you kind of go, OK, <laughs> there you are there. Uh, when a car does win, what does it mean? Does, does the value of that car really increase? If I'm somewhere and somebody tells me that they've got a car that was on the field at Pebble Beach and it won first in class, I'm pretty well sure that's a good car. I thought this was kind of cool. The folks at Credit Suisse put together a very distinguished automotive panel, uh, which included one of my heroes, uh, Professor Gordon Murray, who, of course, did the F1 McLaren. And uh, I got to interview them and ask them questions. I guess tonight's topic, how do we get more older white guys interested in the hobby? <laughs> <laughs> That's what we've got to do here. No, I guess we're here to discuss what makes a car significant. Sig significant means to me, significant to whom? So for example, my grandfather's red convertible was a significant car to me, probably not to anybody else. So we have to define first what means significance to whom and why. Yeah. David? Anybody who's into cars has that first moment from when they were young, that when they really had a connection with a car. First car I drove when I was 13, my dad let us drive a Mercer race about, which Jay and Miles have a Mercer race about. And that car forever will be the most significant car to me because of that memory, and it's just a wonderful car. The Model T is significant. There's the nostalgia in, and we all have nostalgia. Many people in the car hobby come back to buy what they wanted when they were in their teen years and could not obviously afford to get at that time. Well, that's why you like the Model T, because that was a car when you were a teenager. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be interested to hear what you gentlemen think is the most fascinating engine that you have seen in your careers. My favorite engine, very close to home, it's not probably not a milestone engine so much from an engineering point of view, and that's the S70 stroke two, V12, and the, uh, the Paul Roche engine and the F1. I think it's still the best B12 from an oral point of view ever produced. The pickup, um, if you put it in neutral and blip, well, you know, blip the throttle, it's like a thousand cc motorcycle. Right. And that's because it's, as far as I know, the only V12 in the world that doesn't have a flywheel. Yeah, I guess that's true. My dear old friend, Paul Roscher, who designed the engine, we had a meeting in Munich, and I said to Paul, it's a 60 degree V12, so the primary balance is perfect. Why do you need a flywheel? Because I want the thing to pick up very quickly. And his chief designer at the table said, you can't build a road car without a flywheel. And Paul turned to him without even a second. He said, have you ever tried? Uh, and he said, no. And he said, well, don't say no until you haven't tried. And yeah. it doesn't have a flywheel. Yeah, that's the favorite thing about the F1. When you turn it off, it stops yep. right now. Yeah. You go, no, it stops right now. Let's talk about the future. Let's go to the year 2045, and we're looking back cars of the 80s, 90s, or even 2000s. What's collectible? I, I would guess first-generation Miatas. They were plentiful, they were twin cam, they were fun to drive, and they were easy to work on. Maybe the Taurus show. Part of the problem is that the more modern cars are using uh, non-archival materials. 20 years from now, we're going to have a real problem dealing with uh, cars from the 80s and 90s because it's going to be hard to keep their physical integrity. Somebody is going to collect first generation Prius because it's Certainly. cute. It sounds ridiculous. No. We used to buy 59 Cadillacs to go to demolition derbies for four or five hundred bucks and just crash them because they're 59 Cadillacs. No one will ever want one of those. And then a friend of mine 10 years ago came up here to buy a Cadillac, a 59. I said, how much is it? He said, 75. I said, 7,500? That's crazy. He goes, no, it's 75,000. I said, what? The last one I bought, I paid $600 for. <laughs> I think there's an interesting trend already happening, actually, and it's what I would call people's cars. That could happen in the, from 80s and 90s as well, although there are fewer interesting cars around from that period. But things like Mark 1 Golf GTIs, Peugeot 205 GTIs, there's another sector too from the 80s and 90s that will all, it'll always be true, and that's prototype cars. Right. Because prototype cars tend to be a bit out there and a bit interesting and pushing boundaries. Mm -hmm. And I think those will always be collectible. Now, I assume a lot of people here probably have trouble convincing their spouse that they should get a collector car. <laughs> here are a couple of tips on how to do that. In 1983, if you had bought a new kitchen 
instead of an air-cooled 911, that kitchen would now be worth, what's an old refrigerator worth, $200? <laughs> the 911, now worth 70, 80, $100,000. So if you're having that argument in your home, kitchen or classic car, or dining room set or classic car, economically, you gotta go classic car. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> that helps yeah. anybody. I just, yeah. I just go a lot. Listen, I wanna thank our very uh, distinguished panel, gentlemen, and uh, thank you so much for your insight and, and your humor, and uh, I hope it was helpful to some of you that are in the collector car hobby or getting into it or already into it or whatever. So, so and of course, Credit Suisse. Thank you very much. Or Swiss. It's Suisse, isn't it? We have to be very your Credit Suisse. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you very much, Credit Suisse. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. That's great. Pebble Beach, of course, famous for the auctions. We're at the Gooding Auction, where we uh, auctioned off two cars. The first was the new I-8, but it wasn't just any I-8, a very special I-8. And the head of BMW is there himself. And uh, look how much money we got for it. Check it out. Go, 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 your casa. All right, ladies and gentlemen, one of the most anticipated lots of this evening, lot number 52, the 2014 BMW i8. And to introduce it, the great Mr. Jay Leno and president and CEO of BMW North America, Ludwig Willisch of BMW. This is the president of BMW. This car is being auctioned off to help out various charities. Among other things, they help out uh, underprivileged kids in the Monterey area. All the money raised will go to that. Tell them about the car. Well, it's a true one of a kind. It's, uh, it's an i8 to, to begin with. It's uh, truly the, the most advanced sports car you can buy these days. Uh, it's a one of a kind in the sense that it has a unique color scheme. It's frozen gray and it has a unique interior in brown. It uh, even says on the sills here, Pebble Beach Concours Elegance Edition. And it has a plaque in the back that uh, has the signature of all the major uh, executives that were involved in the project. So it is a one of a kind car. And the other thing is this car retails for $136,000. Believe me, you will not get one for that price. This is the only place you'll get it for that price. If you go to, a, if you go to any place, there's going to be people paying huge markup to get this car. I have to say, gentlemen, I think it is absolutely beautiful. Why, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> right. We'll start, shall we, at $100,000. And right away, one, 10, 120, 130, 140, 150, 160, 170, 180. 180, yes. 190, 200, 210, 220, 230, 240, 250. I've got 250 in front of me here and enjoying every minute of it. 400, I yes. did. $400,000. 400. I don't want to insult any women here, but this car has the best ass in the room. Did you see the back of this car? <laughs> it really is unbelievable. Because it's, it's the view most people will see We'll be looking at it going away, so I just want to enforce that. Okay. <laughs> then $750,000 for the first time, for the second time, for the third and last time, and a magnificent three quarters of a million dollars I sell. Sold! Congratulations, yes. right. $2,900. Thank you for helping out thank the you. charities. And thank you, BMW, for being so generous. Thank, thank you, everybody. And finally, something that kind of blew me away. We had a 57 Buick uh, station wagon. A buddy of mine, Gordon Sunland, bought this car. We helped restore it. And we donated it to uh, Wounded Warriors, which, of course, helps uh, wounded American veterans, uh, helps them get housing, medical aid, all that type of stuff. And 100% of the profits go to that. We don't deduct for the cost of restoring the car, the paint. 100% of the money raised goes for uh, that charity. Well, we thought maybe this car will bring 40 grand. It'd be nice if we get 50 grand for it. Oh my God. Look what happened. All right. Lot 53 has been withdrawn, so we're going on to lot number 54. It's a 1930 Rolls Royce Phantom kind of 1 New Market. Approach work by Brewster. Very correct, well documented example. Desirable versus Brewster. Lot number 47, bring it on up, please. It's a 1957 Buick Caballero Estate 
wagon. This is a car that uh, we help restore at my shop. Uh, it's a 57 Buick, really desirable. It's kind of a hard top convertible deal. 100% of the money we raise goes to help the wounded warriors. Uh, there's nothing, nothing is... I want to show you something else. We drove this car down to Texas so President Bush could sign the door. 100% of the money raised here tonight goes to uh, the Wounded Warriors. Colonel Howe is in charge of that product, uh, project, rather. 25-year veteran, Iraqi uh, veteran, and Afghanistan veteran as well. <laughs> Give people some idea where all this money goes. Sure, Jay. So, so there are 2.6 million post-9-11 veterans. Two million of our warriors have served in Iraq or Afghanistan, one million of whom have served at least two deployments or more, averaging one out of three years being gone from their families. Uh, they are amazing men and women who have ensured our freedom and security. 50,000 of them have been wounded in the war. Uh, as we sit here tonight, there are over 30,000 troops still in Afghanistan. That war is not over yet. And so we have another 1.5 million veterans that will come home over the next five years. And so this is about empowering our warriors, whether it's their transition back, battling through the, uh, the uh, adversity of the sacrifices that they made, or even just helping them with employment and education. So it's all about the troops, Jay. It really is. And you all have been reading about the Veterans Administration, just how there's no money. This money is going to help those men and women. We've had a bunch of them come through the garage, my garage, on tours, and their spirits are up, and you know, God, they got the, you know, the artificial limbs and the whole deal, but man, they're just, they're, they're real fighters. They're, they're, they're not depressed people. They, they, they want jobs, they want opportunities, and that's what we hope we can do here tonight. Guys, take it away. All right. Right, ladies and gentlemen, you know where it's going, you know what you're getting, you know what a difference you can make. Let's see the bidding. $100,000. Thank you very much indeed, dear $100,000. Right. Thank you, sir. Thank well you done. very much. Don't be shy, ladies and gentlemen. 110 bid me. 200,000. 200, thank thank you, right. you, sir. Thank you very much. $200. Thank you. Thank you very much. $200,000. 220, sir. Yes. 220. 240. 260. 260. 280, sir. 280. You bid 280. He'll bid 300. It won't cost you anything. <laughs> Look how much bigger it is than the McLaren. You're getting much more car for your money. 280. I have 280. 300. All you right. see, I told you, sir. Think about it, ladies and gentlemen. Don't think about the car. Think about the cause. I have $300,000. So. Something big happening. I have 300,000. He's going to donate the car back. The car is going to be donated straight back again. Very generous. So, 300,000. Thank you. Can we raise 300,000? Can we do it again, Jay? Okay. Right. As Ladies you can see, it turned into a Ferrari. This is truly a miracle. <laughs> It is a miracle! <laughs> so let's start all over again. We have a 1957 Buick. <laughs> Thank you so much, folks. It really is, it's really great. And when these men and women hear what you did tonight, they, they really do appreciate it. They really put their asses on the line for all of us, and, and it's great to see folks being so kind. So let, let's auction it again. Start it again. Right. Lot 47. <laughs> is, believe it or not, a 1957 Buick Cavalero estate wagon. Don't look at this. Guide price, $300,000. Now, I think you were in at 280, weren't you, sir? Yes, he was. 280? I've got 280 from the other bidder. 280,000. We got 280? We got 280. Raise the roof. That is most generous. Thank, Thank you. you very much. God bless you. Thank you very much. Isn't this better than giving the tax money to Jerry Brown? God bless the troops, Jay. And God bless you, sir. Thank you. Please shake the Colonel's hand.
How about a nice hand for Barney? Thank you, everybody. All right, five hundred and eighty thousand dollars. <laughs> That's pretty good, huh? That's not a bad guy. No, no. <laughs> Well, I hope you enjoyed this extended version of Jay Leno's Garage. Uh, we'll be doing more of these extended version ones. And uh, watch this space. Keep an eye out for them. And let us know what you think. And uh, thanks for watching. All right, see you later. Mm-hmm. <laughs>